Welcome to hell. Actually, the adventure starts in Baldur's Gate. But soon the city will be dragged into hell. Actually, it's the city of Alterel that gets dragged into hell. And, and that happens before the adventure starts. Uh, oh, okay, but soon the heroes will be in hell. The adventure doesn't really get to the hell part until chapter 3, though chapter 2 is like sort of in hell. Okay, what the fuck? About the adventure. Zariel, an angel with a fancy sword, wished to use that sword on demons and devils. Other Celestials thought this was a bad move. Zariel responded by leaving, gathering an army from the city of El Terrell, and riding directly into Hell. This was, in fact, a bad move. Much of the army fled, Zariel lost her sword along with the hand holding it, and then she made a deal with the literal devil to become the leader of the layer of Hell she just unsuccessfully tried to invade. Back on the material plane, the troops that fled hoped that Zariel would forget about them. This was, in fact... A bad move. Years later, Zariel showed up during a particularly bad case of undead invasion and gave the town a big sun lamp to roast the dead, but in exchange, the city would be sucked into hell after a few decades. Thavius Krieg, the man that made the deal, elected to not tell the city about that second part. Well, decades have passed, the city of El Terrell just got the big suck, and refugees from El Terrell are rushing to Baldur's Gate. So begins this adventure into hell, with the adventuring party having no idea about that hell stuff. Chapter 1, A Tale of Two Cities. Welcome to Baldur's Gate, a wretched hive of scum and villainy that is currently handling the refugee crisis about as well as the real world is. The party starts out tasked with destroying a death cult that is actually three cults in a trench coat. After going to a tavern where a ghost drops its first new single in decades, then going to a bathhouse with deep economic lore, then avoiding going to hell early by TPKing and a fiery roof collapse, the party destroys the cult. Oh, that cult stuff is already over. Well, a guy not with the cult, but with the cult, said some political stuff, so the party is going to go capture his brother at a boat littered with seagull corpses. If the party tries to capture that brother, he smoke bombs out like a cartoon villain. Oh. Uh, thankfully, a random NPC named Rhea shows up and tells the party they should break into a villa to find Thavius Krieg, who they just learned existed and have little reason to suspect has done anything. This villa has a bunch of invisible imps, guards that take orders too literally to check on disturbances, and a 40-year-old man that will not leave his mom's house. Under the villa is a sewer that no amount of incense can stop from being a sewer. In the sewer, the party can catch these hands of an old woman, meet the man they supposedly broke into this villa to find, get a shield with a demon trapped inside it that seems important but won't be but might be, and free a spy that that expositions the party into getting a puzzle box from the 40-year-old virgin upstairs. Once they get the box, they'll need to deliver it to a mage in Candlekeep, an entirely different adventure module. After donating some Harry Potter fanfiction to get inside Candlekeep, the party can get a mage to solve the puzzle box for them because puzzles are apparently gross. Inside the puzzle box is a very incriminating note stating Thavius Krieg is a bad man and El Terrell's in hell. If the party cares to save the city of El Terrell, it's finally time to go to hell. But not in this mage's office, because they don't have time for that. Instead, the party rides some griffins to an utterly ridiculous mage that will plane shift them to hell and throw in a very plot-relevant flying elephant named Lulu free of charge. Chapter 2, El Terrell Has Fallen. Welcome to hell! Sort of. Anyway, the party arrives, the archmage with them leaves to ensure this isn't a super easy adventure, and Rhea guides them to the high hall since the party has no idea what they're supposed to be doing here. On their way, the party can save some citizens, stop a bad deal, meet Frocrates, die to an anger man on an angry horse, and fight way more ghouls than I thought would be in hell. When they arrive in high hall, the party can meet a CR 1 4th acolyte that somehow defended a hundred people from the CR 2 to 4 devils prowling the area. The acolyte points the party to the cemetery, where they can read an old man's diary, fight way more minotaur skeletons than I thought would be in hell, and put a crown on a very very expensive mannequin that triggers an info dump that causes the non-player characters to believe Zariel's lost sword will save the city without any real evidence. Lulu then points the party to yet another location they could not find themselves. This location is an actual hell, not just a city with hell wallpaper. So the party needs to build Da Vinci style flying contraptions out of random bits of trash in order to float down to actual hell. Chapter 3, Avernus. Welcome to Avernus, the first layer of hell. It smells like tar, the food tastes like garbage, walking sucks, taking a long rest will turn you evil, Google Maps does not work, and the river water will give you dementia. It is also the front line of the Blood War, a never-ending battle between demons and devils which started, I assume, because they could not agree on how best to ruin social programs. The party is directed by Lulu to start with the Mad Max portion of Avernus, which includes demon cars, a community focused on love, affection, and murder, werebore bandit raids, warlords that are disenfranchised with the nearby war, and a dream sequence to unlock Lulu's memories. Doing that last one means getting pointed to a new location by Lulu again. This is definitely not going to get old. Anyway, head over to the Hill of Impaled People and- oh wait, 
Lulu sent the party to the wrong place. That's okay, she can just point them to the right place. Well, one of two right places, neither of which is the actual right place, but her heart is in the right place, and that's what matters. With the first option, the party can go to some trees that grow chickens, then pay to get pointed to a tower, within which is a famous wizard that points them to a different wizard that is actually a devil in disguise. The devil then points them to a mirror, which points them to the river Styx. The party then escorts an imp to the river so they can block the river's flow enough for some goop to become a pit fiend again. Once that's done, the party can return to the mirror so they can return to the devil so the devil can finally point them to yet another location. At this new location, they can burn some servitude receipts to make that knight they actually want to talk to show up. The knight will then point them to an archway which teleports them to a prison within which they can free a demon lord. Once the demon lord is free, the party can go back to the knight to get pointed to the actual location the elephant wanted to take the party to this whole damn time, the Bleeding Citadel, within which should be Zariel's lost sword. Oh, I'm sorry, is this too convoluted for you? Then buckle in, cause oh boy. If the party doesn't want to take the free chicken path, they can instead head to a unicorn trapped in a ball protected by a genie. The genie will introduce the party to someone that will help them overthrow Zarya, which was not the point of coming to hell, but I guess close enough. The genie will introduce the party to the helper if the party breaks the genie's contract with Zarya. To break the contract, the party needs to let a hag take a bath, then get pointed by that hag to another creature, Oldrak, that can actually break the contract. Oldrak won't break the contract until the party helps break his contract with an entirely different demonic entity. To do so, the party needs to go talk to a dragonborn in a tower, but he isn't home, so they need to get escorted from that tower by his heavy metal turtle to another location. At this new location, the party can sacrifice someone to the dragonborn to get the item they need to help Uldrak so they can help the genie so they can get introduced to the person that will sort of help them. That person is a devil named Bell that won't help the party until they find some rods, but will point them to another devil that knows where the rods are. The party can interrogate that devil to then go to a crash flying fortress to retrieve the rods and fight off some warlords and the villain from Fern Gully. Returning the rods to Bell makes him angry because the party is really not under understanding how convoluted this is all supposed to be. But thankfully, he points them to the sword the adventure really hopes the party wants by now. If the party says, fuck it, there's so much walking place to place that we are making this into a hell-based walking simulator, they can walk to a dock where they can hop in a bell and die, walk to a watchtower for no reason, and walk to a big piece of chain for no reason. They can also walk to a wandering emporium to get some food, relax their way into debt, and get a haircut from an ancient dragon. Finally, if they just want to end the adventure early and go play something else, they can walk to Zariel's flying fortress. During all this walking, the party can randomly encounter a premium elf that Pisses into the wind, just like this encounter's designer did. Chapter 4, Sword of Zariel. The sword Lulu and others have been hyping up for a few chapters now is inside the Bleeding Citadel, a good citadel covered by a big scab by the Bad Plane. Not to worry though, Lulu can point the party to where they need to go. Again! While traveling through the scab, the party can stop a devil from being sucked to death, witness a dance party, watch some gnolls play past the severed head, make an alliance that will be broken almost immediately, and reach the doors to the citadel that will only open if the party has not failed the elephant escort mission. Inside the citadel, the party goes into another Lulu dream sequence because this elephant knows everything but won't tell anyone until the adventure once or two. In the dream, the party can run around fighting gnolls and fires until the hero protagonist Zariel shows up, but be warned, if you die in the dream, you die in real life. Well, D&D fantasy real life, but don't tempt fate. Once Zariel shows up, she asks the party the deep moral question, would you go to hell and fight demons to save lives? Even though going to hell didn't really help anyone and the demon fight is unending by design. So yeah, really hard hitting question there, Zariel. After the dream sequence is over, someone can pull the sword from the stone and basically become an angel if they haven't slept since entering hell. The citadel and scab then explode and Lulu regains all of her memories, which would have been helpful about three chapters ago. Chapter five, Escape from Avernus. Hey, remember that city the party is supposed to be saving? Well, it can finally be saved, though it's been in hell for so long there's probably like five people left, but hooray. To save the city, its chains must be broken since it failed to specify a safe word and the party must bust its ball in the sky. If the party doesn't want to go through the hassle of doing anything, they can ask Tiamat to bite the chains and then they can give Zariel the magic shield they've been lugging around since chapter one in exchange for opening the sky ball, both of which could have been done two chapters ago. If the party wants to go for the anime ending instead, they can give Zariel her fancy sword back and say how they still see the good in her heart even after she condemned an entire city of people to hell. Zario can agree to this character arc, take the sword and complete the rest of the adventure for the party, or she can break the sword, make Lulu go as insane as I've become following this elephant's directions, and make the party her servants so they can pull Baldur's Gate down to hell as well. If the party somehow kills Zariel, Elturel is saved and someone else takes over Avernus. That someone could even be the party if they want to go through all the paperwork. I hope you enjoyed your stay in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, here, here it is. What the hell is this, a newspaper? This is like 40 pages of city backstory. Yeah, for, for Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate? That was the setting for chapter one. It has almost no bearing on the rest of the adventure. Well, it's, it's a big part of the book, so we should quickly explain it, right? <laughs> <laughs>